Hello everybody! Okay, today I'm going to be reviewing some of my favourite children's novels um, for children in Key Stage 2, which are age 7 to 11. Okay, my first book is this one, and oh my goodness, my class absolutely love this story. So this is The Tale of Angelino Brown by David Olmond, um, and this book was first published in 2017, so fairly new book. Um, so I recently had this as my class book and I have honestly never seen my class laugh so much at a story. I th I think it was at the story, I mean it could have been at my attempt of a Geordie accent, um, which is where the story is set, but no, I think they just found the story just as enjoyable as I did. Okay, so just like my class did, um, I honestly believe you'll fall immediately in love with the main character, Angelino Brown. So Angelino Brown is a tiny, tiny little angel um, and he first appears in the pocket of a bus driver. Now the bus driver is called Bert um, and it starts actually, the story starts with Bert in his bus and he does not seem to be enjoying his job that much at the moment. He comes across as very, very grumpy um, and seems very sick of his life. So actually I'll read you a little bit to kind of set the scene and, and show you how exactly Bert was feeling with his job. Okay, so, what a way to spend a life. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. Brake sighing, doors creaking, engine throbbing. Traffic lights, traffic jams, hold ups, roadworks, glaring sun, fog and puddles, ice and blooming snow. And bus stops. What's the point of bus stops? All them people waiting, all them blooming hands held out. Stop here, bus driver. Let us go onto your cosy bus. Oh, passengers. Who invented passengers? Old ladies with their sticks, smelly old blokes with their wobbly hands and dribbly gobs, dippy mothers with their screaming toddlers and babies puking in their arms. <laughs> okay, so I think that shows Bert is not really enjoying his job. That is until. He suddenly feels kind of a fluttering feeling in his chest. At first he thinks he's having a heart attack, but then he looks down in his pocket to see little Angelino sat in his pocket. Okay, and from the moment Angelino Brown enters Bert and his wife Betty's life, things start to get a lot better for them. Um, and they decide to adopt him and it's, it's really, really lovely. That is until there is a man in black who t turns up and he actually he appears, or he he claims to be a school inspector, um, and it, it comes across that he's, yeah, he's trying his best to capture Angelino. And because you build such a kind of a love for this character, it's so hard because you you want him to be okay. So, yeah, I just remember my class when I was like, okay, it's lunchtime. They're like, no, no, <laughs> we need to find out more about Angelino. Um, okay, so this book it definitely inspires imagination. Um, I think it raises some good questions as well actually about what's right and wrong and it, it kind of gave me a bit of a Pinocchio feel, it reminded me quite a lot of similar to Pinocchio. Um, so as I've said before it's a really it's a really funny story full of humour but also very very heartwarming and I could honestly read this book over and over again. I mean I really, I'm probably going to do it in a minute, I absolutely love it. Okay so that is my first book review for today. Okay my second recommendation is Bloom by Nicholas Skinner. And this was published last year in 2019. This is about a girl called Sorrel. And I dressed up as Sorrel for World Book Day this year. So hence the headband. Um, Sorrel is so well behaved that the teachers actually go to her to check what the correct school rules are. Um, and school are trying to encourage more children to be just as well behaved. And have actually set up a competition called the most obedient child of the school. Um, Sorrel is obviously completely on course to win it until she finds a pack of surprising seeds in her garden and these surprising seeds cause her a few problems they turn her world upside down she starts hearing voices she starts seeing things and flowers start growing out of her head <laughs> okay so this story it's is so different to any I've read before um, but I absolutely love reading it and I know the children I've suggested it to at school have enjoyed it just as much. Um, it's got an absolutely beautiful cover and I, I've seen the hardback version of this as well and I, oh, it's, the inside is 
got the most beautiful patterns on. So if you do like your beautiful books as well for your, for your bookshelves um, and you like a hardback, I'd definitely recommend getting that. Um, so what I loved about this story was Nicola Skinner's, her language throughout um, is amazing, her word choice, but also I really enjoyed the, the themes of um, nature, of magic and of kind of teaching the importance of finding yourself. Okay, so really, really lovely story. Um, and Nicola Skinner has actually very, very recently, about three weeks ago, um, released or published her next book called Storm. Um, that was published on the 2nd of April and I've ordered that, so I'm really looking forward to reading that one too. My third recommendation for today is The Magic Place by Chris Wormel, and this was published in 2019. So The Magic Place, the main character in this story, is Clementine. Um, Clementine lives a Cinderella-like life, um, working for her auntie and uncle. Um, I think one of the reasons I fell in love with this story so quickly is because the aunt and uncle really, really reminded me early on of Mr and Mrs Twit, and The Twits by Roald Dahl is one of my favourite children's books. So let me tell you a little bit about the aunt and uncle. Aunt Familiar always wore black. Because of her poor eyesight, she wore spectacles with such thick lenses, her eyes looked enormous and appeared to jump out of her head. Clementine thought she looked like a large, fat beetle. Her uncle Rufus had a very large mouth and lots of teeth, and Clementine thought he rather looked like a crocodile. Would you like an aunt and uncle like these two? No, neither would I. And though looks can sometimes be deceptive, in this case they are not. These two were fiends. They were about as wicked and as cruel as you could get. Okay, so poor Clementine has a nasty aunt and uncle and actually spends most of her time locked away in her cellar bedroom. And she spends most of her time in her cellar looking through the chimney um, where she thinks she sees a magic place and she's always dreaming of getting to that magic place. So one day she sets out on a mission with her best friend, Gilbert the cat. Um, to try and find a magic place and to try and escape her nasty aunt and uncle. And I think one of the reasons, well, I read this book all in one sitting and I think the reason for that was because Chris Wormel did such a good job at the beginning of the story making me feel really empathetic towards Clementine and feeling really sorry for her that I could not bear to put this book down until I knew she was going to be okay. Um, so you kind of spend the whole book really rooting for her and hoping that things are going to be okay. So it's a really, it's kind of, it's a funny adventure, um, whilst it's also, I'd say, very thrilling because I could not put it down and, and quite moving too. Okay, and my last recommendation for today is one of my favourite children's stories ever. Um, and it's The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane by Kate DeCamillo, who is an absolutely fantastic author. Um, so this story is all about a china rabbit called Edward Tulane, who I'll introduce to you now. Okay, chapter one. Once, in a house on Egypt Street, there lived a rabbit who was made almost entirely of china. He had china arms and china legs, china paws and a china head, a china torso and a china nose. His arms and legs were jointed and joined by wire so that his china elbows and china knees could be bent giving him much freedom of movement. His ears were made of real rabbit fur, and beneath the fur there were strong bendable wires which allowed the ears to be arranged into poses that reflected the rabbit's mood. Jaunty, tired, full of ennui. His tail too was made of real rabbit fur and was fluffy and soft and well shaped. The rabbit's name was Edward Tulane, and he was tall. He measured almost three feet from the tip of his ears to the tip of his toes and his eyes were painted a penetrating and intelligent blue. In all, Edward Tulane felt himself to be an exceptional specimen. <laughs> okay, so Edward Tulane is owned by a girl called Albeline. Um, Albeline treats Edward with the utmost care and adores him completely. But then one day, on a boat journey from New York to London, Albeline of course takes Edward, because she takes him everywhere she goes, um, but accidentally dropped him overboard into the ocean. Um, so he got lost um, and continues a really long journey back home. And throughout his journey, we he kind of he gets lots of temporary owners, 
which includes a homeless man, um, a scarecrow and a really sick and poorly child. But he learned special lessons from all of those, all of his new owners. And again, a bit like the last book, in fact the first book as well, you're really, throughout this book, you are rooting for Edward. You are wanting him to get back home um, and get back to Alberley. I honestly believe that this book should be in every school library and every child's home. Okay, it is a book that will fill you with awe and it, it really teaches the importance of love. And I was actually really surprised by the ending as well. Had a really, really nice ending. Okay, so they are my four book reviews for today. Um, please let me know what you think and I look forward to doing some more soon. So I hope you've taken care and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye. <laughs>